Thank you, Robin, for the introduction. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. So part of work today, I will talk about it done when I was at Caltech, and the other part is something done when I was a postdoc at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, I'm interested in the experimental mechanics. Uh, so nowadays, there are many testing methods uh, to characterize materials at the various strain rates. So for example, uh, digital image and the digital volume correlation, they are popular methods to mirror the full field deformations. And the challenge is for very heterogeneous deformation field, do we have the good measurements? So here I have developed a new algorithm for DIC and the DVC, so which can mirror this heterogeneous deformation very accurately. And besides that, I'm also working on the uh, cavitation-based parameter uh, to characterize soft materials at ultra-high strain rates. So where the strain rates could reach a few thousand to tens of million per second. Uh, so I will talk about this cavitation base a little bit, and then we will come back to the DIC and the DVC algorithms. So in our experiments, uh, we use the laser to trigger a cavitation inside the gel. And at the side, we also use the high-speed camera to take the video of those bubble dynamics. And then we use the image post-processing to fit the bubble radius versus time curve. And we also studied the bubble dynamics inside the gel. And by comparing the theoretical analysis of the bubble dynamics and also the experiment measurements for the bubble radius versus time curve, so we can extract the surrounding uh, viscoelastic materials properties. For example, their viscoelastic properties, like shear modulus and the viscosity. And these studies are not only quite useful in the material characterization. In addition, it's also super helpful for a lot of engineering and uh, medical uh, applications. So for example, uh, it can help guide the laser eye surgery. It can also use the ultrasound induced cavitation in the lithotripsy to help break down the kidney stone. And it can also use to achieve the drug delivery. Okay, and now let's back to the DIC and the DVC algorithm. So I will talk about what's the DIC and the DVC and the review some current methods. And then I will show you our new method, the augmented Lagrange DIC. And I will also show you it can be easily combined with the adapted mesh. And it can not only works for the 2D data sets, it can also solve the 3D volumetric deformations. So uh, DIC or DVC, uh, they are popular experimental methods to measure the full field deformations. So at the very beginning, uh, we paint the sample surface with some random speckle pattern. And at the side, we use the high-speed camera to take the image sequence when the sample is deforming. And then by use some image tracking algorithm by comparing the deformed image with the undeformed reference image, so we can solve their displacement fields and we can also solve their strain fields. So here I'm trying to improve the image tracking algorithm here. It has lots of benefits for the DIC. So for example, it's a non-contact non problem and it provides the full field measurements and also quite easy to use. And nowadays, uh, it also can be combined with lots of other diagnostic techniques and it can achieve the measurements in the various length scales. So for example, it can be combined with atomic force microscope so you can measure the definition in the nanometers. You can also use this with the fluorescent beads. You can measure the cell mechanics in the micrometer. You can also use the scanning electron microscope with the EBSD. So for example, here, you can measure those twinnings and the shear bands for the alloys. It has lots of applications in the biological and the engineering applications. And in addition, in the geophysics, you can use the satellite images. You can use this to monitor the earthquake or track the movement of the glaciers. And not only for the solids, in the fluid mechanics, it has very similar method called the PIV. So for, for example here, you can track in those uh, micro droplets. You can use this to study uh, the fluid mechanics during humans coughing and sneezing. So basically, uh, in the DIC, so we are giving lots of those images. So we have the reference image uh, where the grayscale value is fx. And we also have the deformed image uh, where the grayscale value is the gy. So here, f and g, they are just some scalar function. And x and y, that's their coordinates. So we are giving this fx and we are giving this gy. So what we want to solve is the mapping from x to y. So for example, this can be solved by solving lots of the optimization problem. So for example, you can minimize the summation of square the difference coverage function, or you can maximize the cross coverage function. So for example, if I assume uh, the yx is some x plus some translation vector. So if you plot this cross coverage function, you will have some peak. And the position of this peak, that's the translation displacements. 
And to solve this uh, optimization problem, uh, there's uh, lots of methods. And currently, all these methods can be cast into two categories, the local method and the global method. And in the local method, uh, the whole image domain would be divided into multiple subsets. And each subset is assumed with the uniform definition. So for example here, each blue box is to assume with the uh, UI, that's the translation vector, and also the FI, that's the distortion uh, definition through the tensor. And uh, we also assume each subset, they are independent with their others. So this, you can solve this uh, after this problem, use this local solver. You can solve this, use the faster forward transform, or you can use the uh, ICG, which is the inverse composition of Gauss-Newton method. So since all these subsets, they are independent, so you can solve this in parallel. And also since each box, it only have a few parameters. So for example here, it only have the U and F. So with this, just a few parameters, so everything converge very fast. But however, uh, the soft solution may be not compatible. So for example, at the interface between those boxes, uh, the soft solution, uh, they may be overlapped or maybe separate. So the solution may be noisy. So besides local method, there's also some global method. So we're not solving those one by one. So instead, we're solving all those subsets together. So for example, we can re write, rewrite a definite field based on some global and element basis function. And we can solve the same optimization problem, but use the global solver. So for example, here I can solve this use the find element method. So here I have the stiff matrix M, and I also have the external force vector B. A little different from the traditional fine element is here, the M and the B, it involves lots of those image grayscale values, which is the little f and the little g. Since all these images, they are highly oscillating. So the traditional uh, several point across the quadrature doesn't work here. So instead, to do this numerical integration, we need to use the pixel-wise summation. So pixel-wise summation, which means this method is the, could be very expensive, particularly for very large image or 3D volumetric images. But the benefits of the global method is it's always guaranteed the kinematic compatibility for the sub distance field, but it may be more expensive. And also because all the subsets, they are solved at the same time, so the convergence could be slow, and it's harder to implement this in parallel. So both of these methods have some pros and cons. So there are some methods to further improve uh, local and global methods. So for example, in the local method, because the soft solution may be noisy, so we can additionally apply some filter. Uh, so however, the choice of filter needs lots of the art of work. And for the global method, uh, we can add the regularization to speed up the convergence, or we can use the domain decomposition to do this in parallel. So however, all this is the certificate and it needs lots of additional work. So here I come up with a new method. Uh, which take the advantage of the local one, which is the faster speed, and also take the advantage of the global uh, method, which guarantee the kinematic compatibility of the solved distance field. So I call this the augmented Lagrangian uh, method. So let's start from the local method. So for each subset, we assume the Y is some translation and some linear fine definition tensor. So previously, we assume this U and F, they are independent with each other, and we solve this locally and in parallel. So however, in global picture, uh, we should know uh, the definition during the tensor should be equal to some gradient U. So that's the definition for the F. So here, I want to apply this uh, global compatibility constraint. So I'm not directly applying this. So instead, I introduce another new auxiliary variable, U hat. So I'm trying to seek some u hat, uh, which the u hat is close to u, and the gradient u hat is close to f. Uh, for example, I can apply these constraints uh, by adding the linear uh, Lagrange multiplies. So however, due to numerical reason, uh, this is hard to solve. So instead, I add both the linear term and the quadratic penalties. So you can see here, I add the linear penalty and the quadratic penalties for these two constraints. Uh, the combination of this linear penalty and the quadratic penalty is called the augmented Lagrangian. So that's why this method is called ALDIC. And I can further rewrite this formula by combining the linear uh, and the quadratic penalty into a shorter form. And here uh, I have the uh, U and F, uh, that's the previous local variable. And I also have the new variable, uh, that's the new, newly introduced the auxiliary global variable U hat. And I also have the W and the V, that's dual variables. And then I'm going to solve this optimization problem. 
so here I use the scheme called the uh, uh, alternating direction method of multipliers. Uh, basically, I deal with solve those variables you, in the alternating directions. So I fix some variables first, I solve the others. And then I just fix the others and solve the, uh, the first fixed ones. So the first step is I fix the global variable you had and I optimize over the local variables u and f. And I solve this problem uh, u and f using the local method. Uh, so it can be solved locally in parallel and it's super fast. It's just like the traditional local subset of the DSA method. And after that, I come to the second sub problem uh, where I fixed uh, uh, the u and f and I optimize over the u hat. Uh, so you can see once the u and f is fixed, uh, the first term is fixed. So even though this is a global problem, uh, but it's very easy. Uh, you can write the Euler Lagrange equation. Uh, this is a very nice uh, equation. For example, on the left hand side, it's very nice some portion uh, operator, some identity. It's well conditioned, and there are lots of methods you can solve this. You can solve this with the finite difference, uh, finite element, or you can also use, solve this with the Fourier transform method. And then also, for example, here, uh, this global method, uh, if you use the finite element, since the U hat is not highly oscillating, so you can solve this with the several uh, Gaussian quadrature points to do the numerical integration. And uh, since there's no image grayscale values, uh, so it can solve the very fast. And then I do the uh, update of the dual rivals, and I come back to the sub of one and I do the iterations until convergence. Uh, so here, the one example I solved the DIC challenge sample 14, uh, which is the uh, highly oscillated deformation. So you can see here the deformation of some sine function with a changing frequency. And I solved this uh, deformation uh, use the local, global, and AL3 methods. So for example, here, that's the solution. So you can see uh, the local one, which is the first row, always has the largest noise. And if you compare the global and the AL, you can find if the def definition is the, the kind of smooth. So, you, so in the global, you can add some suitable regularization terms to still provide good results. But however, near the boundary, maybe have some problem. But the AL, there's no this boundary bias error. And then for the uh, very heterogeneous definition, so AL still provides very good results. And the overall, the root mean square error for the solved the distance fields, the AL is the best uh, performance for all the three methods. And not only for the distance fields, if you look at the stream field, uh, you can have a similar phenomena, like AL have the best overall uh, accuracy, particularly for the highly oscillating stream fields. And for the time cost, uh, so for the local method, it's usually the, it's the fattest, because you can also use, you can always use the parallel computing. Uh, and the coverage is very fast. And AL usually the ADMM iteration coverages within three to six steps. So it's just a few times of local method. So usually it's about three times couple of time of local. So it's still fast method. And the global method usually the most expensive ones. Uh, so here to a quick summary. Uh, local method, I solve all those subsets independently. And so it's fast. But the soft solution they may not be compatible. Uh, and if you compute a string, you need some additional, uh, introduce some new filter, and then do the derivative. Uh, so there's lots of the art of work. So the global method is already guaranteed the kinematic compatibility, but however, it's more expensive. And for the AL method, we decompose the problem, go to two sub-problems. In the sub one, we use the local solver. And in the sub two, it's a global solver, but there are no image grayscale values. And then we do this ADMM iterations and the, the coverage is like within three to six steps. So the coverage very fast. And the, both this sub of one and the sub of two, they can be computed super fast. So this is a fast and a compatible solution. And also the F for the string, uh, that's the direct output. And this ADMM is not only useful for this uh, digital image correlation. It's also related with a lot of other uh, methods, like operator splitting or primal dual method. Also, and also nowadays, it's quite useful for the machine learning computer vision and for the material science. So here, I want to show you a few more examples. Uh, one of those examples is for the heterogeneous fracture. So here, we 3D print the uh, sample with the two types of materials. So here, the gray color is the relatively stiff materials, and the dark color is the relatively compliant uh, materials. And we do the mode one uh, fracture experiment. So you can all use these all three methods, you can solve the definition field. So here, the distance field, there's no uh, big difference. But if you look at the string field, you can see the local method, it always have the largest noise. Uh, global method is the more expensive. Uh, AL, it gives you uh, 
best performance, so it's fast and also uh, less noise results. And another example is for the very large definition. So here the, for the foam uh, with the, under the unit axle compression, uh, the compression ratio is about 50%. So you can see even though the soft, the white displaced field is kind of smooth, but if you look at the string field, the UI, uh, you can very clearly visualize all those uh, local buckling uh, bands during those band uh, form. And uh, if you compute the grayscale value residue, you can see, for example, here, uh, the reference image and the deformed image, they have quite a big difference because uh, the foam was under huge compression. But if you use the soft solution uh, from the LDS you had, and if you walk back the deformed image, so you can see the walk back image is very close to the reference one. Uh, actually, this is a soft solution. So this tells us the soft system uh, field is very accurate. And also, uh, even though there's still some some points, you can see there are large image risk value residue, but all those residue also indicators for the local limb bands. Okay, and then I found this ALDS can also easily to combine with the adapter mesh to further reduce the computation cost. So let's start from the like one of those very coarse mesh, and then we solve these uh, two sub problems. And the su after sub two, since it's a global uh, step, so I can introduce the opposed to our error estimate based on the final element solver. So the idea is very close to the uh, adapt match final element. So I can find the word elements with the large uh, errors and I can further refine those mesh. Uh, I can, so I can go to the level two for those mesh. I can resolve this problem. I can recompute those error estimates uh, for the elements. I can further refine the elements with the large errors. I can do this iteratively until I achieve the good uh, spatial resolution. Uh, so here the one of those example is for the uh, collective cell migration. So here a lot of cells they are, have those interactions in the center and, and you can see all those deformations they are happening in the center and all the four corners almost no deformation. So here if you apply this uh, adapt mesh uh, DIC method so you can automatically refine the mesh in the center and also the soft solution there is no big difference with the if you use the uniform mesh it, but you can save lots of the Computational cost. And uh, sometimes it not only saves the computer time, it also improves the measurement accuracy. Uh, so, here the one example I'm solving the shape member alloy in go titanium half new. Uh, so, this uh, shape member alloy, the crystal change from the cubic uh, to the model clinic, uh, and it forms those twinning bands. Uh, if you solve those uh, twinning uh, behavior, so you can see if you use the coarse mesh DS results, uh, all the results will be smeared across the twinning interface. Uh, so you have the large uh, error here. If you use the fine mesh uh, DIC, you can see uh, the spatial resolution for the twinning interface is quite accurate. But however, uh, you also increase the noise for the full measurements. Uh, so if you use the adaptive mesh DIC, you can see all the mesh, uh, they will automatically refine near the twinning interfaces. And to solve the solution, you have the best accuracy among all those three uh, meshes. Yeah. And not only for the 2D, uh, you can also apply this method for the 3D volumetric deformations. Uh, so here, instead of using the 2D images, we use the 3D images. So all these images, uh, you can use this, for example, uh, from the uh, X-ray tomography, or you can also get some these 3D images from the MRI or confocal microscope. And you can use this method to study lots of those heterogeneous definition in the 3D. For example, you can study the indentation, you can solve the uh, power uh, materials where there are string localizations, you can solve the force chain uh, in the granular mechanics, you can also solve the cell mechanics to study the interaction between the cells and the surrounding uh, matrix. So here I will show you one of those examples. Uh, I applied those uh, uh, steel bead on the hydrogel, so which is the indentation problem and I solved those uh, distant fields uh, under the bead. Uh, and we also uh, compare this solved solution uh, with the Abacus uh, final analysis simulation. Uh, so you can see uh, the solved displacements, UX, UY, UZ, they make very good agreements with the uh, Abacus solution. And if you look at the string, uh, it's very similar. Uh, the, you know, the crop uh, slice, uh, it also make very good agreements. So in a quick summary, uh, today I will show you the ALDS and the DVC, they are fast method, and they try to solve the global kinematically compatible solution. Uh, it's very accurate to mirror the heterogeneous definition fields, and it can be applied with the adaptive mesh, and it can solve the, both the 2D and the 3D volumetric deformations. 
And for a little bit of future work, you can also speed up this with the GPU. You can combine it with the image processing techniques. And then you can also apply it with the HP adaptive mesh. And uh, not only for the continuous subset to subset, uh, from more general point of view from the multi control rich optimal transport, you can also solve this uh, in the discrete cases. So for example, you can also use the AI method to improve the accuracy and the robustness for the particle tracking algorithms. And uh, our code is available in the MATLAB uh, file exchange. Yeah, finally, uh, I want to thank my PhD advisor, Kaushik Bhattacharya, and my postdoc advisor, uh, Christian Frank. And I want to thank my collaborators uh, from the Pogba City University, Wisconsin Madison, Unisha Ganabur, Caltech, and Brown. And I thank my funding resources. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jim, for the wonderful talk. Thanks a lot. Um, we do have a question.